International Polar Year, and basically scientists from all around the world came to Canada to take measurements of meteorological, magnetic, and auroral phenomena. All right, June 6, 1916, the government of Canada decides to coordinate uh, all of the scientific research in Canada and creates the Honorary Advisory Council on Science. Is this just one big shot? Yeah, it is. No. Perfect. Okay guys, so on August 28, 1921, John Herbert Chapman, father of the Canadian Space Program, is born in London, Ontario. 1932 to 1933, the second international polar year happens in Canada, except this time we have radio techniques. And 1952, the Defense Research Board, founded five years earlier, merges with two National Research Council labs, the radio and electronics, to form the Defense Research Tele Telecommunications Establishment in Ontario. This is the predecessor of the Communications Research Center, which is pretty important to space. Okay, in 1954, the Defense Research Board builds the Defense Research Medical Laboratories in Downsview, Ontario, merging in 1971 with the RCAF Institute of Aviation Medicine to form the De Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine, which they used to help develop medicines for the astronauts. 1958 to 57 to 58 international geophysical year canada also builds the churchill research range in northern manitoba for launching suborbital flight like this wow great it's terrific okay and on october 4th 1957 the space age begins with the launch of sputnik one it was putin's work it was all putin's work Part three, boot, bootus, void, piss, pulls, mark this separately. Ah, what is bootus void? Huh, what is it? Speak. Wow. One might ask me, what is the great bootus void? My game. It's just a big void in space. Hey, look at here, check this out. The, uh... The Virgo Supercluster, right? It's about 110 million light years across. It contains 2,000 galaxies. And the uh, Great Void is about uh, 330 million light years in diameter. But it only contains. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the fact that I just said that 
we wouldn't have found another galaxy until 1960. I mean, think about that. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. I like that, you're trapped through the door. Shut up. That can't be fun. Anyways, there have been theories of what explains this great void. Like, uh, the number one theory. It's a common theory in smaller voids that the uh, galaxies are just simply clustering together. But the thing is, the galaxies in the Bootus void are way too small. If that was the truth, then the galaxies would have to be like 166 times the actual size of what they are. Anyways, the second theory is sort of the same thing as the first theory. Theory two, big ol' bubbles. But instead of the galaxies coming together, it's the voids. Duh, the voids come together sort of like, um, think of bubbles in a, in a sink. With like just just the last couple remaining bubbles on top of the full water of sink, they 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 come together and they have these sort of rings of water around them. You know what I mean? That that would be the rings of galaxies because the galaxies in um in uh, the Bootus void are like tubes. Okay. They're very tubular. I perfectly but like, I believe like in you. circles. I, like tubes. I don't believe him. Hey, what do you, you don't believe me? The third theory. Yeah. What's the third crazy. theory? What? Okay. I'll tell you the third theory as long as you let me out. Freaking door. In order to understand the third theory, you need to know what the Kardashev scale is. I, I don't know if it's called the Kardashev scale. I forget what it's called, honestly. It's something like Kardashev. The Kardashev scale is a scale of how advanced the civilization is. It ranges from type 1 to type 5. And, um... A uh, type 1 civilization is a civilization that controls all of the power of its local sun. Planets formed. Uh, or star, I mean. For our case, it would be the sun, I guess. Or for your case, for you idiot human. A type 2 civilization controls all the energy in their uh, galaxy. All the stars and, and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. The, you might be wondering, how, how can they control the stars in the galaxy? That, that doesn't work. They're too, they're too hot. It's easy. You simply have to create Dyson shells, which are pretty much like solar panels, but you just cover the whole sun in them. And they take all the energy. It's really A type 3 civilization controls all the energy from their um, local group of galaxies. The bullets is void. They would, their civilization, their civilization would have controlled 10 galaxies. galaxies. That's, that's a lot of galaxies oh, if you think I'm about it. That's a lot, I'm just going to steal your alien. That's the, that's the end. It's the end of the video. It's kind of a weird ending, but that's actually the end. <laughs> I, I put all the information, I just didn't do any good conclusions or anything. So, uh... Yeah, that's, that's the end. We are the product of a grand evolutionary sequence, cosmic evolution, about which we are only occasionally aware.